Hi, I'm Ethan Lehman and welcome to Guess What? On today's show, rock star and cricket superstar, we visit the home of Aussie wicketkeeper Peter Neville. We take you behind the scenes and underground at the MCG with a remote controlled monster truck and Jazz Fleming finds out all about the hat trick. All that and more on Guess What? See you later, goalposts. Woody season is over and cricket is back. And so is the pitch. But did you know the MCG has not one, but 10 cricket pitches? During winter, they're kept here on a hill between the MCG and the AFL's Richmond Tigers footy club. Come cricket season, it takes three nights to get them back into the G, and each one weighs about 30,000 kilograms. It's about as long as a couple of school buses and just as wide, but only about 200 um, millimetres deep. So what better way to transport them than a giant remote controlled monster truck? If you could imagine the monster truck just really stretched out to the length of the cricket pitch and raises and lowers down and grabs the pitch with hooks and lifts it up underneath its belly and carries it inside. It all happens late at night so they can stop traffic and drive them along the road. It's pretty amazing to see you know, almost 60, 70 tonnes of machinery just driving down the road with flashing lights and. Um, yeah, the remote control guys at each end bringing it in and squeezing through the tunnel and out into the ground and repeating the process ten times. They scrape away the grass and sand in the middle of the MCG where there's a giant concrete square to place all ten pitches side by side. But why ten? Because this is the MCG and every match is really important, we try to make sure that every match has the best pitch possible. This one is for the famous Boxing Day test. Records are kept for how each pitch performs. The spin, the bounce, the number of runs scored. That way they can work out where to place them each year. And once they come inside, they're pretty much looked after seven days a week, eight hours a day. You would have heard TV commentators talk about the pitch for days leading into a game. That's because it's pretty much the most important piece. It impacts who will win and which cricketers are chosen to play in the first place. All right, time for a fast fact. In the 70s, when Australian wicketkeeper Rod Marsh faced one of the fastest bowlers of all time, he'd stuff something in his gloves for extra padding. Was it A, cotton wool, B, steak, or C, marshmallows? The answer is steak. Huh? Luckily these days, wicketkeeping gloves already have lots of padding. And speaking of wicketkeeping, time to go visit the home of Aussie wicketkeeper Peter Neville. <laughs> Even when you're a world famous cricketer, you still have time for other cool hobbies. And for Australian wicketkeeper Peter Neville, it's music. And not just any music, heavy metal rock music. Well, these days I'm, I'm more into sort of some heavier stuff, um, a bit of Metallica and that kind of thing. Peter started playing guitar five years ago and now has a collection of six guitars and never goes on tour without one. I take uh, this guitar with me everywhere we go. Um, it's always in its case in the bottom of my kit and uh, it's a great way to wind down after a day's play. Music is also an important part of his preparation for a game. Surprisingly, uh, heavy metal can be quite relaxing as well. So like you listen to it you know, on the bus on the way to the game or you know, trying to get yourself ready in the change rooms. It's a great way not only to relax but also to get yourself, I suppose, you know, amped up and ready to play. The wicketkeeper for Australia is a big responsibility. You need to have excellent concentration, be fit and acrobatic. When I was younger actually um, uh, did a rolling course. So I got taught how to tumble by some, uh, some acrobats in a circus. Peter became a wicketkeeper when he was nine years old, but he started cricket even earlier. I was seven and I just, I suppose I loved watching it on TV and really wanted to get involved. So I went and joined my, my local club and played. The youngest age then was the under 12s. So at the age of seven playing under 12s, it was a, a lot of fun to be able to go out and actually, you know, participate in the sport that you love. Now he gets to play his favourite sport seven days a week. And who knows, this might not be the only big stage we see him perform on. I've got a few guys that I catch up with and play with um, and we're working on a couple of things so I'm looking forward to playing a few gigs in the future. Lots of sports including cricket, rugby, soccer and hockey all use the term hat-trick. This means a player has achieved three great things in a row. But did you know it all started with cricket 
a long, long time ago. More than 150 years ago, this famous English cricketer called H.H. Stevenson was bowling in a match in England when three balls he bowled in a row got three batters out. The crowd was so excited, they collected money and bought him a hat to congratulate him on his incredible trick. And so, achieving three great things in a row became known as a hat trick. Hat tricks are extremely rare and only about 40 players in the world in the history of Test cricket have gotten hat tricks. Amazingly, an Aussie player almost got two. Here's Jazz with the story. Hi, I'm Jazz Fleming. My dad Damien Fleming, or Flem, as they call him, is a commentator on the Big Bash League. But he used to play cricket for Australia and in his first match he got a hat trick. So that was in 1994. What happened five years later? Well, five years later, Adelaide Test, I find myself on another Test hat trick. Can you believe that? Wasn't that nervous, because you know, I've already done a Test hat trick before. And I was bowling to an Indian batsman called Srinath. I got the edge, and the ball was going straight to the great Shane Warne. He's got it! Oh, Warne's dropped it! Can you believe that? Shane Warne, who got a hat trick at the MCG, has dropped the hat trick catch. He dropped the catch. So I could have had two test hat tricks. Tell me about that hairstyle you had when you played. Mate, it was all the craze in the 80s. You had to have a mullet. I'll tell you what, I might even bring it back to this big bash. It's been 13 years since you stopped playing cricket, but you still go to work with your teammates. It's a bonus to be able to work within cricket on the Big Bash, which is so exciting. Is it true that all the boys have to wear makeup? Ricky Ponting, he spends about two hours beforehand. Um, Adam Gilchrist, an hour. Who do you go for in the Big Bash and why? There's only one team to go for in the Big Bash. That is the mighty Melbourne Stars. And um, I wouldn't mind you playing for them down the track. You keep your cricket going, boys. Dad, thanks for joining us on Guess What? Hey, cheers, Jazz. Good to catch up. Hey, Dad. One has got a statue, but where's your one? Oh, if only he'd caught that catch, I might. No, nah, let's go. That's it for this episode. See you next time on Guess What?